identity is essentially a set of information that defines one thing relative to another thing. There are broader sets of identity, or more general, more universal, and there are more specified sets of identity, more particular sets of identity. And in order to have specified or particular sets of identity, you need broader sets of identity to serve as a baseline or foundation for the more specified sets. You only get to more specific sets of identity with increasingly broader sets. And something that's important for this, okay, this is key, is that you do not go from the most universal set of identity to the most particular in one step. That is insane. It's impossible. No, rather you slowly get there with increasingly specified sets of information. Now the most specified set that you are familiar with is of course the individual scale, the individual identity. There is a is an incredibly composite set of information that defines you relative to what you are not. Now I'm not going to say that set of information is the soul, I do not think it is. I think it's something the soul can be involved with, I think the soul is involved with sets of information, but nonetheless this is something the soul does, so effectually it is you. However, you do not get to you, an incredibly composite particular set of information, from an incredibly universal and broad foundation like the baseline set of information that require, that is you know, prerequisite to be a human as opposed to another animal. That's an incredibly universal, broad category. Do not step into an individual from there. There are things defining you uh, across this chain of definition, of increasingly particular definition. So of course race is real, of course tribes are real, um, of course now in a pretty unprecedented but extended period of history, uh, tribal dynamics are very weird because we do not live in tribes, we do not actually have tribes, but for most of human history we have. And tribes were essentially extended family, right? So I have a concentric circle model that I wrote about in an article called Concentrism, something about, it was basically political speculation. I, can't, I forget the full title. It's on my website though. Um, therein I discuss this concentric circle model wherein the outermost circles are the more universal sense of identity and the innermost are the more individual or particular identities. In order to have a particular identity, it is nestled into increasingly general sets of identity. So when something like um, global animal, which just means whether it's animated or has a soul, uh, we could say an individual soul in this case, um, special, so species, are, we are humans, and then racial, tribal, familial, individual, and of course this can be subdivided potentially, well not infinitely, but way further. It can be subdivided further, but this is the general scheme that I put forward in that article. So, of course we live in a period in history where these things are not very apparent to us, especially because white people tend to operate primarily at two scales, the broadest and the most specified. So the global and the individual scale. And I have a hunch that this is done in large part to basically fillet yourself. <laughs> basically 
Well, yeah, and to inflate your self-worth. Um, it, you cannot genuinely operate at the global scale without appropriately situating every intermediary, which white people tend to overlook. Even now, think of like Western family dynamics. Uh, it's very common for older generations to tell younger generations that they're basically on their own and that's how it should be. And the older generations forget that they themselves are in this chain of inheritance uh, of certain conditions that were developed as this chain goes on. And they think that they really did it all themselves, but they did not. They did not. They inherited conditions um, and they want to cut you off in large part this is of course not ubiquitous but in large part they want to cut you off from that chain of inheritance and this is something that white leftists or maybe leftists in general uh, take problem with which they should this is something where far right thinking should converge on leftist thought because it's absurd you are due an inheritance. I don't just mean like literally an inheritance when your parents die or something. I mean a civilizational inheritance. Now they grieve over this, but I ultimately think that their anger and emotions are misdirected and they support things that are going to be at their own expense. And not only at their expense, but everybody else's expense. So, this is slightly tangential, this whole chain of inheritance. But in any case, it's a good example of how even familial dynamics, which is like one step beyond your individual identity, is a familial identity, you feel disconnected from it, so maybe that doesn't sound as appealing to you or as truthful to you at first, but it is. It's only that dynamics are very warped in modernity, uh, which is part of the reason why we have gone so blind to these intermediary sets of identity, which we certainly have. We Westerners, <laughs> especially, they don't They've gone blind to their own culture, which of course is part of a larger set of identity that lends itself to the individual. The individual identity is in large part shaped by broader, not just one broader like cultural identity, but many, many circles of identity nestled in broader circles, okay? And you'll get all the way to the animal circle, okay? There are things that define you as an animal as opposed to something inanimate, of course. even say real, being real, is the broadest circle if you want, as opposed to unreal, which is just a concept, not even a real concept, it's a negative concept, you can't, you don't even have a concept of the unreal, but that's incredibly tangential. So this is almost a message to leftists, um, but let's get a little bit more specific, because leftists tend to, because they inherit this, uh, this developing tendency to operate on two scales, the global and the individual, they go blind to the intermediaries as we have established, and they do not see any problems with immigration and things like this, they deny race, which is demeaning to all races, frankly. But they deny these things as conveniences. Um, however, the people that they petition to bring more of into Western countries do not think like this. They have no such conditioning. So race could even be fake, but if you bring in a lot of people who are operating under my false presumption of intermediaries, let's suppose, the effect will remain the same. 
if you have people who operate under in-group favoritism, as we're seeing in Canada right now with white leftists coming to recognize this, maybe not across the board, but in some cases, then <laughs> you're bringing in people who are going to see you as an outgroup and compete against you. So it can really get to a place where the success of these outgroups is at your expense. And I'm not even going to say this is a bad thing that they're doing. Consider that they are under no obligation to their outgroup or the outgroups relative to their in-group. I'm not even asking you to take this as completely truthful. I'm asking you to entertain the thought that they are not obligated to do that. What happens when that spirals out of control? Not good things for you, a member of the outgroup. So consider thinking of things with these intermediary sets of identity in mind. Consider, entertain the thoughts of thinking with in-group favoritism because many other groups do by default and you're going to disadvantage yourself by just completely ignoring it. And by the way, entertaining it and being able to think in these different ways does not mean you have to surrender to it. You know, worst case scenario, you have more perspective to work with. So, waving at my neighbor. <clears throat> Anyhow, that's about the sum of it. <laughs> think about these things, okay? Read my article if you want, because ignoring these sets of information, these identities, does not make them unreal, because for one, other people are operating on the assumption that they are real, so they effectively are real. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. And they are real, by the way, ontologically. They are real, and if you, you're at a disadvantage if you're operating under some illusion and other people are not operating under that illusion. If everybody was operating under that illusion, then you would not be at such a disadvantage. But they're not, so <laughs> consider these things and consider the consequences of certain political sensibilities and what to do about it. I made a tweet about this. After you've thought, and if you grant any validity to these increasingly specified sets of identity that lead up to your individual identity, of course, it's very composite and complicated. <clears throat> so the scheme I gave early, earlier, while it has some reality, it's just a scheme that is pretty general in itself, and it doesn't account for many things that would factor into some like something incredibly complex in its composition, which at the individual level is. And that follows from building something incredibly particular from the composition of just innumerable layers of increasingly universal sets of information. So consider that. Consider whether you should have some in-group sensibilities. Consider how you should incorporate um, these intermediaries in all of your considerations. <clears throat> because it will only serve to broaden your perspective. Now, of course, in some way, you should have the ability to situate all of these intermediaries in an underlying whole or a gestalt and you will have the best most dialectical perspective possible at least relative to this so anyways some quick thoughts thank you for listening farewell